So the moment of truth is almost upon us. I'm a little bit nervous. I don't want to wreck this lovely Matai guitar body. So I've got the template for the pickup routing clamped on top of the body in the correct place. I've set the routing depth reasonably shallow. So let's go. And I can see that I've done some damage already. It's recoverable because it's in an area where you won't be able to see it. It's behind the pit guard, but I've damaged the template in the process as well. It's because I didn't lower the blade far enough so that the bearing would run along the edge of the template. Instead, the blade was touching the edge of the template. So I'm going to set the depth a little bit lower just now, and then we'll be away laughing. I can see even that isn't going to be low enough. I just assumed initially that it would be, which is a very bad idea. That should definitely be low enough now. Okay. Now I am actually, see I, I haven't gone around, I haven't gone around that damaged edge because it's pretty obvious what will happen if I do. I am really just going to have to make another template before I continue, which is a little frustrating, but at least I know I can do it. So I've got a new template. It's easy to do once you have a template already. Uh, there was one flaw in the template which I damaged, so I used that template to make this one, and then just used a straight edge to make sure that the damaged edge was not damaged on this one. So now let's route out the second pickup pocket. Let's just make sure I have the depth right. getting so clogged up I'm just gonna have to stop and give it a clean out so I brushed out all those wood chips and then came back and gave it another good go in fact I can just see a little bit of roughness on the edge there so I will quickly clean that up now okay now let's see what the result looks like okay yeah, there's still a tiny bit of roughness there I may actually just Get that little sand, there's a little splinter or something there and that, however, other than that minor defect, that's quite a good pocket. Uh, that one has a little flaw that I mentioned earlier due to user error, which I'm not wild about, but it won't actually have any effect on anything because it will be covered by the pit guard and it's very small. So I've come up with a solution for that irritating nick that I made in the top of the pickup cavity. The Toronado um, has a uh, has another cavity and a channel leading to it for the switch up here. So I just started that channel at the top of the pickup, thus cutting out that ugly nick. Um, it does need a little bit of tidying. I can go over that again, over that edge, just to make sure that that gets tidied up. But I feel better now that my pickup cavities at least are the way that they should be. So there we are. The routing is taking shape. Of course, there will need to be another channel down here for the wiring that leads to the controls. And I'll route out a back cavity for that shortly. So, it's late at night here in the Monster Guitars workshop. But I just thought I would give you a progress update. So, I have, uh, other than the neck pocket, which I will... I will do a bit later. I'm going to wait until I've got the back plate for that. I just want to make sure I get the holes in the in the right place. So by getting the back plate uh, with the holes already in it, which is the way I'll get it, I'll have a better idea. Well, I'll be more sure of where those holes should be. But when it comes to the pickups and the wiring, I've done all the front routing now. So the pickup selector switch pickups themselves, wiring between them, and the wire off to the controls, uh, which will be inside the cavity that I haven't routed yet on the back. So, next stop is to route the cavity on the back. Hello again. So, having now completed all the front routing for the pickups and the controls, although I may make that a little bit 
bigger that hole there just to give me more room to install the switch the switch itself may be bigger than that but setting that aside I'm turning my attention now to routing the back cavity so that I can install the potentiometers or pots which are really just volume and tone knobs as we commonly know them so using the guitar template that I used to cut out the body which also has a picture of all the parts I just drilled through where the knobs are uh, and those are, are just guide holes, the final holes will be larger than that, but just to give me an idea of, of what I'm dealing with. And when I did that, I put a piece of MDF on the back, so that I could then work on a template for routing out the back cavity. So that's what I will do, I'll use some straight edges of wood as templates to route this out, and then I'll use this template to route out the cavity, and then I'll get to work on making basically a diamond shaped uh, panel for the back but that can wait that's not a high priority thing that can come right at the end I'll probably make that out of maple like the neck although it'll be painted white just because that's the color of the body turquoise and white so I'll get started on this and I will be back with you in a moment So there we are, one back cavity template ready to go. Let's clamp it onto the guitar and do the deed. So this is the amount of wood and now in the form of very small chips that has come out of this relatively small cavity so you make quite a mess during this but it's looking good so that's the, going to be the shape of the cavity it will need to go a little bit deeper but I won't need the template anymore and that's because the hole is now deep enough that the, that the existing walls can serve as the template. So I will just run the bearing along that and press the bit a little bit deeper down to cut out just a tiny bit more. And I want to leave just, I don't want to make it too thin on the front. In fact, I will check, maybe I won't. I'll check how long the, the control sticky arty bits <laughs> are before I go any further. But I'm just about there, if not there already. So there we have it. So I've routed out the back cavity where I'm going to be putting the volume and tone pots. Um, and over the top of this, as I may have mentioned earlier, there will be a wooden plate. Uh, but I don't want, I could do it this way, I could just then screw the wooden plates onto the surface of that wood so that it sticks out from the wood, and that wouldn't be the end of the world, but I don't want to do that. I want to recess the plate so that it's on pretty much the same level as the surface of the back of the guitar which means that I'm going to route a channel around it which is quite shallow uh, but deep enough to accommodate a wooden plate so what I'm going to have to do now is make a template and then use my flush trim routing bit at a very shallow depth to go around that so let's get started on the template in principle, this is a really basic thing to do. So I've taken the template that I use to route the control cavity, and I've just traced around the edge of that with a pencil onto another piece of MDF. And then I've simply made that wider by a few millimeters on every side. And then I will route out this larger cavity, and then I will use that as a template not, of course, to route out an entire cavity that's larger, but just to route out the edge around this one uh, again at a very shallow depth so let's get this new template routed out here's the template for what I'm about to do which I guess you could call a channel or a lip or something for the back plate to sit in I'm just gonna uh, flip this around 90 degrees and route over that to make it nice and smooth but the next time you see this it'll be clamped on the back of the guitar 
around the cavity so that I can then route a little bit wider than the cavity. In order to have the bearing running along the template when the blade is only cutting a very shallow depth, I have elevated the template on some pieces of MDF. But the battery on my phone is running really flat, so I'm not going to record what might be the disaster of me trying this trick. There it is, the channel around the edge, which means that I can make a wooden plate to sit on the back of the control cavity and it will be recessed. It will sit flush or close to flush with the surface of the back of the guitar, which was the whole point of this. So there it is. Yeah, I will use some fine sandpaper just to make it all nice and smooth around edges so that nothing is, is sharp, but it went well on the whole. So, I didn't exactly lie to you, but I did make things sound a bit rosier than they were. You see, in the last video, when I made the lip around the back cavity to access the controls, I said something to the effect of, I'm happy with the way that looks. And it wasn't awful, but I wasn't really happy with it either. Um, what I've done now is I've made the template hole just a little bit bigger in every way. And I've gone and routed that again. Too bad if I wanted to make it smaller because once you've cut, you can't put back. Um, and the result now is that there is a considerably larger area on the lip, which is good. Uh, it'll make life a bit easier when putting the plate in. Makes it easier to sit the plate on there. Gives me more room to put screw holes. And also, the wall along there was it had a fault in it. Um, there was a, a slight defect in the template, and that translated through to the guitar body, and I wasn't wild about that. So I've fixed that up now. Uh, it's not symmetrical in that there isn't the same amount of lip on every side, but it really doesn't matter as long as there's enough lip on every side, because once you've got the panel on, the plate on the back, no one's going to see how big the lip is anyway, as long as the screws are in the right place in every corner. Things will be fine. So, I am glad I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I, I'm glad I did that. It's better. Better this way. You'll notice there are some imperfections. Well, you may have noticed, but I noticed. Um, in, in the wood, in one of these pieces. They're not cracks. They're just kind of, I don't know how deep they go. Obviously not all the way through here, which is good. Um, I'll sand that a little just to see if I make any headway, but if I don't, it's not the end of the world. I'll, I will be filling all the cracks and whatnot, and then sanding, and then priming, and then sanding. So before I paint, the surface will be very nice and smooth. That's still a little way off, though. I still want to acquire the electronics first. Exactly which step will come next? I'm not 100% certain. I may give some more attention to the neck, although I am waiting on sorting a table router for that. I don't know, you'll see what comes next when I, when, when I see what comes next. In the meantime, wait in suspense. So this is going to be a raging triumph, or I am about to destroy this guitar body. The time has come to route the neck pocket. So I've clamped the templates for the neck pocket down and well, I guess all that remains now is to simply route away. Okay, so I have routed out the shape of the neck pocket. It's obviously far too shallow at the moment. You'll never get a neck in there. So what I'm going to do is do a couple more passes with the router and I will route that down to a depth of just a whisker under one inch. Uh, the neck thickness will be just slightly over one inch. And so once I've got to that depth, I'll be able to think more carefully assess just how much deeper I need to go once the neck is ready to go in there. Right, this will get me started. 
So on with that. Okay, now there's a little bit of cleaning up around that to do. I'm trying to find my brush so I can clean out some of this sawdust, but... So, beneath that template there, you can see some rough bits around the, the edges, which I will file and do all the usual things one does to clean things up. But I've marked a line just shy of an inch and have routed down to not quite that deep. So I know that I definitely haven't gone too deep. I will need to go a bit deeper to accommodate the neck when the time comes. And that's completely fine. And yes, it's very dark because um, I still don't have a multi-board in here. So when I plug in the router, I unplug one of my lamps. But that went pretty well. It wasn't the disaster it could have been. Onwards and upwards.